Okay, good morning YouTube. Reef Rookie here. It's Friday morning. And here he is. I finally have my Bicolor Angel. I've been wanting one of these for quite a while now. He is in quarantine. He's doing pretty well. He looks awesome. You can't really tell because on the camera it looks kind of like um, he's yellow and black. But he's really he's a brilliant color yellow. And he's a brilliant blue and he's got a white stripe running down the midsection. So he looks really cool. Um, I got him Sunday. Today's Friday. So I've had about five days. And he's been sitting five days with no medication. Just in quarantine with the water salt gravity matched to my display tank at 1.025. He's doing good. As you can see, he's pretty active. He's got a great appetite. He, I've been feeding him a lot of mice and shrimp. I've been feeding him every day. He eats frozen mice and shrimp. As you can see, he likes the sea veggies that I have in the clip and he also he likes the pellets though they're not his favorite he'll eat them but if you look close in my tank you can see a couple of them sitting there on the bottom of the tank but everything I give him every time I feed him he chows so that's I'm happy about now <clears throat> I know I said I was gonna do a three-part series on quarantining and this this is number three hyposalinity um, angelfish are very sensitive to copper Copper being my favorite um, treatment in quarantine as a, as a preventative measure for ick and velvet. But this guy, I guess, is pretty pretty sensitive to copper, and I don't want to kill him. I got a coral beauty a couple months back, and I don't know if he was sick from the outset because he did, never ate. He didn't really swim around much. He just hid in the corner, and he lasted about two weeks, and, and he died. But this guy, he's doing pretty well. So anyway, hyposalinity. First thing you gotta know about hyposalinity is it's a little labor intensive. As you can see right here, I had to put a, a uh, mark on my tank and keep keep my water line right where it needs to be. And here's why, because you have to lower your salt gravity down to 1.009, okay? Do yourself a favor, get yourself a refractometer, okay? Calibrate it and use it. If you're using one of those swing arm jobbies, do yourself a favor, throw it away and spend some spend the money on, on something like that. That's that's actually a Red Sea refractometer. I want to say it was probably, th I think I spent like $35, $40 on it, but it's well worth it. I use it all the time. So, here's what I did. Took out some water out of my, out of my quarantine tank here and slowly added RODI water. Okay? And today is the first day of hyposalinity, so what I did, I didn't want to crash down the, the salt gravity level, right down to 1.009. So I slowly added it, and I brought the water level down to 1.020, okay? And that's where I'm going to let him sit until tomorrow, and I'll probably bring it down to 1.015, and then on Sunday, I'll probably bring it down to 1.009. And that's where I'm going to keep it for three weeks. I don't have a auto top off system on this little 10 gallon quarantine tank um, for a couple reasons. The main reason being is if my wife told me if I spend too much more money on this hobby I'm gonna be living in one of these fish tanks. So we're gonna do it old school. We're gonna keep that fill line. We're gonna watch it several times a day. We're gonna top off with RODI water and keep that level as close to it as I can. Hopefully this will all work out well. As you can also notice, I have my air stone cranking away in there. Now, oxygenated water is really important. Not so much when you lower the salt gravity as much as when you raise the salt gravity. Um, when you raise the salt gravity back up, it tends to deplete the oxygen levels in the water and the fish uh, will stress out. So, I started my air stone in there and he's cranking away. I'm getting plenty of uh, oxygenated, oxygenated water. Okay, I have my badge showing me that there's no ammonia in the tank, and I have plenty of RODI water in the tank uh, on hand to top off this guy. Now, what's going to happen? Hyposalinity. Okay, the ick parasite. Basically, from my other videos, you know that the ick parasite drops off the fish and becomes like an egg. Okay, like an egg type uh, organism for several days, and then it hatches into free swimming. Parasites that attach to the fish, they stay in the fish, attack them, and drop off, 
and the cycle just continues to go around and around and around until it overwhelms the fish and the fish dies. So the hyposalinity, the, the ick cannot live in hyposalinity conditions. Basically the ick will burst at salt levels of 1.009. Um, that's why a lot of reef people that are in this hobby rinse all their stuff out in fresh water, RODI water. When I do a water change in this tank, I, I soak my my siphon in fresh water, I soak my nets in fresh water, everything I, I have in here gets soaked in fresh water t for a couple of hours and that tends to kill off the ick parasite and then I let everything dry. Obviously ick can't live in a dry, dry conditions. Now, a couple things you have to remember, or actually I should rephrase that, a couple things you have to do when you're doing the hyposalinity treatment. The filter pads and your filter need to be changed daily because what's going to happen is the ick parasites are going to go into your filter pads and try and hide. Um, as you can see, I have a bare bottom tank. I have nothing in there except the PVC and my equipment. The ick parasite is going to try and find some place rough to hide, such as sand bed, things like that in your display tank. When he goes in, when the ick parasite goes into the filter pads, that they're going to try and hide and, and sort of nest in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my filter pads daily. Can get a little expensive. Um, I am running carbon right now at the same time to keep the water as pristine as I can to, to not stress the fish too much. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it out daily, soak it in RODI water, dry it out, and reuse it. And hopefully the uh, the parasite won't won't last in the filter medium. Now, once you get the water level down, the salt level down to 1.009, you want to re maintain that level for approximately three weeks. And hopefully by that time, all the ick parasite will be dead. The cycle will be finished and your fish will be healthy. At that point, you're going to slowly raise the salt gravity back up to 1.025, which matches my display tank. Do that, and what I'm going to plan to do is I'm going to keep my guy in there for at least another two weeks of observation, and it's going to give me a chance to treat him with some Prazapro just to make sure he doesn't have any worms or, or anything like that. But as you can see, he looks pretty healthy. He's eating. However, every once in a while, I have noticed he, he gets on his side and rubs in the bottom of the tank. Of course, he I haven't seen him do it since this video started because that's just the way it goes. But... When he does that, that's kind of a red flag. I want to get out ahead of this parasite to make sure it doesn't attack him and doesn't make him freak out. Um, if he does show signs that he's stressed out, like if he stops eating, if he stops swimming, things like that, uh, that might be an, an indication that he's got something going on. I find that although this treatment method is labor-intensive, I tend to think that it's going to be the least stressful to the fish as long as it's done right. Copper obviously is a pretty nasty medication and it's toxic to all fish, especially angelfish. I don't want to kill this guy. Tank transfer method, probably the most labor intensive treatment method. And I can't help but think that taking the fish out of the tank every three days and moving them into a new tank, netting them or however else you get them out, that's it's got to add stress to them. Okay? It's going to hurt them possibly hurt him if he's already infected with something by netting him, scratching against the net, putting him in new water, and just generally freaking him out and adding the stress. I I personally believe that this is probably the least stressful way of treating the fish. Now, that's just my opinion. I'm not a professional. Like I said, I'm just a hobbyist like you guys, and I'm just trying to pass on what I've learned by doing a ton of reading, watching other guys on their videos. So, that's it in a nutshell. I'm going to lower the... Uh, the salt gravity down to 1.009 over the course of probably two or three days. I'm going to keep the water super oxygenated, keep the temperature right. I am running carbon. I'm going to change out the filter media every day. And we're going to maintain uh, a healthy fish, hopefully. We're going to keep feeding them and we're going to keep observing them. Um, if you do this and you can put an auto top off system on your quarantine tank, I recommend it because now you, you're going to keep that, that level rock solid where you want to keep it. So, um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. As you can see, my guy, he's he's pretty happy. Now, I'm a little nervous because they say this guy's the most aggressive of the angelfish. I'm not sure what he's going to be like when he goes in and meets his tank mates. Um, I have a couple clowns, a couple cardinal fish, and a yellow tang in my display tank, and that's it. This guy's probably going to be my last addition fish-wise because I only have a 55-gallon tank and I'm 
I'm campaigning here at home to upgrade to at least a 75-gallon tank. Um, I got the wife on the ropes. She's ready to give in, but I'll keep you guys posted. Anyway, I don't want to take up too much of your time. It's already gone 10 minutes with this video. Again, please like, subscribe to my videos. Um, thank you so much for subscribing, you guys that are watching this. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the comments and the fish. Um, like I said, when I get to 100 subscribers, I'm going to do a random drawing, and some, some one of you guys, that lucky subscribers, is going to get a gift that's worthwhile um, for this hobby. And that's about it. If you see anything that I did wrong, comment below so I don't kill this fish. Like I said, I'm not an, I'm not a pro yet, <laughs> but I'm working on it. Um, I'll keep you guys updated on this guy's health. Now, did you see that? There's a little twitch there, and I kind of saw him just kind of rubbing his side on the bottom of the tank. So hopefully we're going to get that taken care of. But anyway, Reef Rookie, signing out. Please remember to like. Please remember to subscribe. And once I reach 100 subscribers, someone's going to get a free gift. All right? Okay. See you later, guys.